All right, welcome back. I took a little bit of a hiatus there. I had to step out of the country for actually my honeymoon. I went and got myself married. So we're back. We're good to go. It took a little bit longer than anticipated, but now we're back. We're going to start with AI. I believe that no AI in a three-dimensional game is complete without some sort of navigation. So we're going to start with navigation to begin with. And then later on, we're going to be going over logic and decision making. Probably not a state machine, but something a little bit similar, but simpler. Then after that, we'll go into it actually attacking the player. And then following that, we're going to be going into player health and things like that. So to get started, first we're going to need to change a few things about the scene, and I've already changed some things. I went ahead and made the enemy have a mesh that is within the static body 3D as opposed to the mesh being the container. And so now the mesh is by itself. Its scale is all defaulted to one, and it is just using the size to make its actual shape. And of course, updated the collision mesh to something approximate it. And then I also changed the mesh reference to the model as opposed to the container. This just helps with tweening when moving around on, an, on a navigation grid. So for now, we're going to be using something called a nav mesh. To create a nav mesh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a child node. We're going to search for navigation region 3D. And this won't do anything by itself. First, we're going to take the environment and make it a child of that region. What we're going to have to do next is create a navigation mesh. Within the navigation mesh is a lot of options, and I'll link the documentation, but I'm not going to go over all of them here. There is one of particular note. We're going to make the radius 2. This is just going to handle the AI being uh, rather large. We're going to leave everything else default, and we're going to hit bake nav mesh. And you'll see the model be created here. This is pretty fast on a scene that is this size, but on larger scenes or scenes that change rapidly, baking a nav mesh can become a little bit prohibitively costly. And that's where something like A star pathfinding can come in. That's what I use in the Hermit project. But for now, we're just going to go over nav mesh as it is a very detailed system that works really good with complex environments. And it also runs extremely high performance if you bake it. The actual baking process is where most of the performance cost comes in. Now, all we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a child node to the enemy. We're going to use the Navigation Agent 3D. Navigation Agent 3D has a couple of options. For whatever reason, in Godot 4.0.2, as of making this video, navigation will not function if you do not select avoidance enabled. Not sure why, but for the time being, I just select it and go on about my day. Finally, we're going to go ahead and create our scripts and we're going to hop in code. So we're going to go ahead and create those scripts and then we'll get started. And the scripts are both going to be called enemy navigation control. And they are both going to inherit from node 3D. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and hop into that code and get started. All right, so what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be creating a couple of exports. This is just going to be, firstly, our target body. So this is going to be a node 3D. And this is going to be what the AI is moving towards, just for debugging purposes. Later on, this will be set dynamically based off of what's near it. And then we're going to also need to create a variable for movement speed. And we're just going to default this one to 4.0. Um, it's going to be a float as well. Following that, we'll create one more export that will be a navigation agent 3D. And we're just going to call this navigation agent. And this is going to be a reference to the node that is a child of this container. And finally, we're also going to need a private float movement delta. This is going to be calculated during the runtime for how fast you want to move. And then we're also going to need a last position vector 3. And this is going to be used to make sure we don't spam updates to the nav mesh uh, path generation, which is one of the most costly functions within Godot, actually, that I've noticed. Now, first off, we're not actually going to do anything in process. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. We're going to call this function set target, and we're going to be passing it a vector three movement target. And within this, we're just going to have the navigation agent dot target position equals movement target as a slightly different reason why we aren't using set target position like in the documentation and i'll go over that after the coding process first we're going to go into process and we're going to set if target body dot global position does not equal last position and we could put a bias in here but for now this will work we're going to set the last position equal target body dot global position and we're going to call the set target function and this is just going to rebuild the path to the target location in this case the player 
Next, we're going to create an override for the physics process. And the first thing we'll do in that override is just check to see if the navigation agent is navigation finished. And this is just going to make sure that we're not running this code if it's at its destination. And we're just going to return that if that's the case. Next up, we're going to calculate that movement delta. And that's going to be based off of movement speed multiplied by delta. That is the time between frames. This makes the movement speed be based off of time. So it's four meters per second in this case. And next, we're going to declare three variables in the physics process. One's going to be called next pose, and the, these are all going to be vector threes, and it's going to be the destination for the next position and path. So that'll be navigation agent dot get next path position, as it is made up of a series of points that the agent moves down in order to reach its destination. The next one is going to be current pose, and that's just going to be our global uh, transform, global transform dot origin. And then finally, we're also going to create a new velocity. And this is going to be the actual velocity vector that we want to travel on in order to reach the destination. This is going to be next pause minus current pause. And that's just going to get you a vector between the two pointed from current pause towards next pause. And we're going to normalize that so that it's just got a length of one. And we're going to multiply that by the movement delta that we just calculated. And finally, we're going to pass that into navigation agent dot set velocity. Now, navigation agent will do some math, and then within the signal, it will actually pass back the result. And we're going to create a function to pass that back through. We're going to call this function on underscore navigation agent 3D velocity computed. And we're going to make sure to pass it a vector 3 as a parameter. And this vector 3, we're just going to call safe velocity. What this does is it basically checks to see if there's anything in the way and adjusts the velocity based off that and then passes it back and we receive it here. And then all we have to do is tra move our origin, so our tra global transform dot origin, based off of that using the move toward function, which I believe we've used in the past. However, we're going to have to do something a little bit different than C sharp. So global transform is actually read only in C sharp. So we're going to have to build a new transform 3D, which we will then modify and then overwrite the global transform with. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. And the move towards requires also a delta, which will be movement delta. This will ensure that we're always moving at the same speed. All right, and we're back in Godot. So real quick, I do want to go over a couple of differences. So here we're using the target position. In the actual documentation, it will use something along the lines of set target position or set target location. That is not currently, perhaps it's being depreciated, but it is not currently in the autocomplete. So if you go to set target location and it's a function, you can pass it a move, a um vector it won't work in c sharp however it does work here even though it's not in the autocomplete but within c sharp it will not function so i went ahead and went with target position equals movement target i'm unsure if it, this is the quote unquote correct way to do it but for now it's certainly working all right so once we're back in 3d we can go ahead and assign the c sharp so we'll just drag it in there and let's set the target body to the player and the navigation agent to here and within the navigation agent, everything should be fine. But let's go ahead and set that radius to two. This will just make sure that if we spawn multiple AI agents, they will navigate around each other. But if we go ahead and hit save and hit play, it should work just out of the box. Ah, so we're running into a slight issue here. As it's not moving due to the navigation agent not being passed back the velocity. So if we go here and hit connect, we can select the enemy, we can pick, and we can select that one right there. But let's go ahead and hit save and see how it works. So, as you can see, the AI moves, and he does path pathfind around objects. Let's go ahead and make him a couple new objects, just so that he's got something a little bit more complicated to pathfind around. So we'll make that one, and then we will also go ahead and create this one. And we'll need to regenerate that nav mesh. All right, we have a little bit more interesting of a nav mesh, so let's hit play. So if we go here... And as you can see, he will find his way around. And it still works just fine with the code and the the scoring system. 
So we're good to go on that. So next time we're going to be going over a little bit more logic. So perhaps a wander state blending into a chase state. And then the episode following that, we're going to be going into a little bit of combat, making him shoot at the player, perhaps with glowing orbs or something like that. And following that, we're going to actually go into player health and things like that. So we'll be back out of AI following that. But for now, this is all we're going to be doing. I will continue to post updates on the Hermit project with devlogs. But like I said in that video, they will be a little bit few and far between as I will be only posting when I have something substantial to show. As for some of the comments that I received on the last video, a lot of great, helpful comments, a lot of good constructive criticism. And thank you so much for everyone who posted comments on that video. It was my po most popular video by far. We... I worked over a lot of the different ideas in my head as well as talking to my wife about them and we think we've solved some of the issues with alchemy and so that's probably what I'm going to go into next. Following that I kind of want to rework how the terrain looks and how it works. I've got some qualms with how I implemented it and I do want to work on it. Thank you all so much to all of the past subscribers and all of the new subscribers who have subscribed in the last couple weeks. I do normally post at a more rapid cadence than I have in the last couple weeks i've just been out of the country but thank you all for your patience and if you are interested in any of the tutorial videos that are coming up or the devlogs for hermit be sure to stick around through all the normal methods and as always to everyone thank you and have a wonderful day